Facebook friends. Welcome to Vegging Out with Kay. Sorry we took a break last week. I was getting some trees cut and creating a lot more sunshine for my garden, so you know I'm excited. But we wanted to come back to the garden center today. Brenda, zoom in. We wanted to show you our raised bed that we planted, what, about three weeks ago now. Look at how big it has grown, you guys. Just absolutely unreal. Remember, this was our Daddy Pete's raised bed soil mix. On this side, we had the Espoma. I can't really tell a difference. This is cauliflower and this is broccoli, so I'm not judging those. You can see the kales are both about the same size and the lettuce has taken off. So today we're gonna harvest our lettuce and I hope you're ready to have some salad for, for dinner tonight, Brenda. Looks like some good wraps too. Oh man, R lettuce Get rid of the carbs, that's yeah, lettuce. Yeah, see, I love a lettuce wrap. So let me tell you a little of the history. Remember we planted, um, and I told you I would treat if I needed to. Well, I did. Um, so one of the first friends that showed up was the flea beetle. And the flea beetle is a really small black beetle. There's several different types. There's actually one that loves um, the cucurbit crops, the broccolis and kales and cauliflowers. So I used an organic insect control, and this is a pyrethrin, so this is actually derived from chrysanthemums, and it got rid of the flea beetles nicely. And Brenda, can you come in and you'll see the little holes? They're very, very tiny They're holes. It's like a pin. Tiny little pin holes head. right here. I'm gonna put my finger right on it. That's the little flea beetle hole. And you see, this is all on the old foliage. The new foliage looks fine. Well, then we had the cabbage lopper that came in and laid the eggs. So then I treated with our BT, and this is a biological control for worms and caterpillars, okay? And so I sprayed it on here, and that has really taken care of all of our problems so far. We did just fine. We've got some white flies out here. And this is normal this time of year. The bugs are busy at the end of the summer trying to make their way. So I'll come back in again and spray with some insect control um, maybe tomorrow evening or something like that. So let's harvest some lettuce because I remember we talked about that. I have my handy dandy little serrated knife that I love. And I'm going to let Brenda walk around here. I'm just going to cut a couple. I won't do the whole crop just yet. And what we'll do is we're gonna come down into this whole head here. I'm gonna move around, Brenda. And I'm just gonna cut, cut, cut down that short. And that will grow back and put out more lettuce leaves for me. Now, if you can see, I've got my peas coming up down here and I really need to harvest this lettuce because the peas are starving for some sunlight. So let me go ahead and cut another one. And we just cut straight across there. Oh, there's a good pea. See, it's coming on. And these are gonna come and trail over the edge. And then I kind of clean up all this stuff on the bottom. And this stuff I'll take home and feed to the chickens. They will love that. Those are some big heads. That, yeah, that's that a front beautiful one was huge. head, yes. So we'll go back around when we get done and I'm gonna harvest all of this lettuce and let it come back out. Um, so if your lettuce is getting done, I know we've been planting for about a month, our fall crops. Um, we do have a few lettuces left and I have lots of seeds left. So you still have plenty of time to get your seeds started. You can start them in little trays outside and keep them watered. You can direct seed them. Um, but yeah, now's the time. Keep going while we've got this nice weather and it's supposed to cool down next week. I'm looking forward to that. So, speaking of seeds, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, we're gonna switch to this side, is I wanted to demonstrate how to start a sprouting jar. And you, have you sprouted, Brenda? No, I haven't, but I've, I've bought quite a few from Erica, you know, like the radish greens. I mean, yes. a lot of, I mean, lots of good stuff. Yeah, so this is a super easy way to extend your harvest. This is a great way to have fresh green and veg during the winter month um, that you're growing yourself. It's also great for kids, again, if you're 
homeschooling your kids at home right now, get some sprouting seeds and do a, a sprouting jar. So the first thing I will tell you, the most essential thing you have to do is be clean and clean your equipment, okay? Pathogens can grow in this, and just like if you're canning your own vegetables and fruits, you wanna boil your jars for 10 minutes in boiling water. I boil my rings, um, I boil lids if I'm using lids. Make sure you wash your hands, use clean water. So just remember, be clean, just like in a restaurant. Think about if you're out eating, you want them to be clean. Same thing if you're preparing your own food. Cleanliness is essential, okay? So you can do this in several different ways. I use a mason jar, a glass jar, and this is appropriate for canning, and it can take being boiled. Um, and you can use several different lids. We'll go over that in a minute. Some people just use a plastic food container. Now this can't be boiled, but you can wash it in hot soapy water and um, sanitize it that way. To make a sprouting jar, you want holes or mesh in the top of your lid. So now let's see, Brenda, if I can get in here. So this is one I made, and this may not be appropriate. Can you see the holes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I drilled holes in it, and then it had little burrs on the back, so I had to take a metal file and file it off. So this may not be the best way for you, but this is one that I use. Then this is a cool one that Harvey let me borrow. This is a total plastic lid. And it has a little mesh in the top. This is solid. This doesn't come apart. Like a strainer almost. Like a strainer. And so this is an easy one to use. You can also make something similar to this. There is a plastic embroidery um, cloth. And it looks just like this, but it's kind of white. You can get it at craft stores. And that you would take, trace your lid around it'll pop into the top and then it'll essentially look like this. Oh, okay? like a cross-stitching embroidery. Yes, cross I have that. Oh, you did? I it's... called it embroidery, didn't I? I was asking. Well, it might be called that. I'm, sure. I don't, I'm crafting, you know, sewing, Brenda's not my thing. Okay, so that is something you can use or you can use just cheesecloth. Oh, that's okay? easy. So you just cut cheesecloth and this is nice because I just throw it away after each sprouting so that I don't have to worry about the cleanliness of it. This is also handy if you're doing really small seed, like broccoli sprouts or clover sprouts or something like that. Is this, is this how they do microgreens also? Yes, it is. Sometimes, some people can do it this way. Some people actually seed mm -hmm. the greens, the seed in a tray, and then they'll just harvest those. They'll just take scissors and cut the microgreens mm -hmm. off. Um, so that's another fun project you can do, and maybe we'll look at demonstrating that. Okay. So this year we brought in a couple of different mixes. These are organic seed. And you do wanna make sure you're buying seeds that are appropriate for sprouting. Um, some of the seeds may have been treated with something and you wouldn't wanna eat those. So you're safe either getting them like from us, our, our organic brand, or at a natural food store. They will have seeds that are appropriate for sprouting, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do, and I'm actually gonna use Harvey's lid because it's super cool is we're going to try, so we have mung beans, and this will be a very big, crunchy sprout. Um, this is great for adding into your stir fries and things like that. And then we have a salad mix, and this is clover and broccoli, and I think some, oh, alfalfa and radish greens. So this one's gonna be very colorful. This would be great for salads or putting on sandwiches, things like that. Radish greens are great. I love them. They I really them. are. Yeah, I love all the little micro greens. Um, so one thing I'll tell you is, you know, a lot of websites will say, oh, put a half a cup in. Well, you got to be able to eat them within a few days. So start small and see how many you actually can eat or have a couple of jars going at a time at different intervals so you won't be overwhelmed and have so many sprouts that you have to throw them away. And they're also really good for your dogs. Really? They're very, they're really beneficial. At least the micro now, greens are. How do you get your dog to eat sprouts? This. I have to put peanut butter. Just drop it on the floor. For Leroy to get him pills. I mean anything. He loves peanuts. No, I just I have labs. I just drop drop it on the floor. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> no, Leroy is very persnickety. So I'm going to show you what these mung beans. These are beautiful seeds, aren't they? Pretty. Oh yeah. Isn't that neat? 
Okay. Little so pea shooters. There's like little peas. Okay, so what we're going to do, and I'm just going to start with a couple of teaspoons, and we're going to drop them in our jar because I don't want to go crazy. I just want to do as many as I can eat in a couple of days. Did you boil the palate? <laughs> This is my country kitchen. Are you kidding me? I have cooked on worse, Brenda. <laughs> I can cook anywhere, y'all. Okay, so this is our fresh water. Now, the first thing you want to do is we're going to rinse them and clean them. So we'll give them a good swish, put our lid on, and then we'll pour the water out. This is why I love cooking outside. You can just throw everything out. Okay? And then, now we're going to start our sprouts. So, for the first night, we're going to cover them with water, up for about an inch over the top, and you're going to store them in a cool, dry place. Now, you don't want to put these in the refrigerator, because that will halt them from germinating. It's too cold in the fridge for them to germinate. So, for the first night, we're going to let them sit here and soak. Now, if anybody floats the next morning, get rid of it because that seed is not viable, okay? So just pick it out and get done. And then the next morning, you'll give them a swish. We're going to drain it out again. So this is day two what you're doing. This is day two. Again, back in a cool, dry place. But here's where the important thing is. Now you want to start rinsing these twice a day, at least twice a day. Some sprouters will rinse up to four times a day. Oh, wow. Usually I do it in the morning and the evening, and this is to keep them clean and to keep the pathogens out. So even, they'll start sprouting probably within about two days, and you'll just keep rinsing. Same thing, add a little bit of good clean water, swish them around, make sure they drain well. You don't want them sitting in water, and then you can put them back on your kitchen counter or somewhere, not in the hot sun or near the stove. Some sprouters will sprout them on their side, so you can experiment with that. Um, and you'll do that for about three or four days until they're to the appropriate size. So you want them to be, you know, the, the mung beans will be a couple inches long, um, and you'll be able to tell when they're ready. Taste them. When they are ready, you'll empty the jar, salad spin them, or you can lay them out, rinse them, clean them, put them on paper towels to dry, salad spin them that's when you'll store them in the refrigerator. You can put them in a clean Ziploc bag wrapped in paper towels to help keep the moisture away. Um, or some people just leave them in their jar if they're gonna eat fast enough. But I like to get another jar going. Um, and so that way I kind of have sprouts all the time for my accoutrements, <laughs> okay? So sprout, sprout, sprout away. This is super fun, super nutritious. No soil required, no fertilizer required. This is the easiest way to grow. Um, and it's just a lot of fun and save yourself some money because, you know, this little seed is, packet of seed is $4. And I know packets of sprouts sometimes are $4. And there's many, many jars of, sea, of sprouts in this little packet. So, and they store well too. So if you wanna come, you know, buy up a few and keep them for the winter, that would be a great idea as well. So, okay, um, so after, the, so the second day, so about four days, you're doing the rinse yep. two or three times a two day or, three or more? Two times a day, morning okay. and evening. And then when they're done, they're sprouted to the appropriate size. If you let them go too long, um, you know, they'll really outgrow themselves because they do need the nutrition to keep growing. So I usually give them about four days. Okay. Um, but you may have to judge, like, where you are in your house if they're getting you know, enough light to sprout and such as that. So um, you put them on a counter away from direct sun, yep. not in the yep. refrigerator, not, not, in, refrigerator, not in the hot baking sun. Not in the hot baking sun. I put mine, my kitchen faces north so it never sees the sun. So my counters are a great place for mushrooms and sprouts. Um, I have all kinds of stuff growing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> on the ceiling too, huh? Yes, apparently, <laughs> yeah. So that is sprouting, you guys. Please try it, it's super fun. If you have any questions, give us a buzz. Um, I think next week we're going to talk about how to maybe save some of your seeds. So if you have tomatoes that you want to save, they're still in your garden, leave them there. Okra, beans, we'll kind of go over all of that. Um, and then we'll be talking about okra and or, um, 
garlic and onions when they come in. They should be arriving in time to put in, and we're going to transition and put some garlic in. Uh, and I can't wait for that. That's one of my favorite things to grow. All right, Brenda. So I'm going to send you home. I don't have any sprouts for your salad, though. That's I'm sorry. Right. You're fine. But we'll just send you some lettuce. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great See job. You guys. Bye.